Why e p snap silu he squeeze im laugh lim lum put ye up picks my heat them eat all e im kailuk nich nach tikuti kailuk e ku alau o skel hulau. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Imlauch Michelle Johnson, and I'm a, I'm representing the Sealch Language House and my partner organization Tikuti Chaylich, our language nest. From left to right, our wonderful team of Suchtums, Krista Lindley, Stikamaskit, Sky Fay, myself, Imlauch Michelle Johnson, and Stakalx Haley Costum. First, I'll tell you who we are. I will share a few photos and a brief film. The Silk Language House was formed in 2015 to create fluent speakers. We're filling a critical need within our nation. Insuction is critically endangered. We teach adults in small groups following sequenced curriculum, and we recently formed a partnership with Tikuti Heilich to teach children in a nest with a family-based program. We openly face barriers and build realistic solutions together. Tikuti Heilich means we just get it done. And they are a partnership providing family and parent-based programming, dynamic Salish language revitalization, power and cultural renewal, and building a stronger, healthier community. Basically, the Silk Language House and Tikuti Heilich are radical revolutionaries. We are inspired by some really smart people that I came in contact with while I was doing my PhD research. First and foremost, Daryl Kipp reminds us to work with the ones who want it. He was the one who said to us, don't ask for per permission to work with your languages. Sam Tietze, Sarah Peterson, our fluent elder, also inspiring. She's the one who built kindness into our fluency curriculum. She worked with Chris Parkin and Larray Wiley of the Salish School of Spokane and completed an entire adult curriculum and formed the Salish Immersion School for 75 children and 30 adults. And look at that ratio, 75 children and 30 adults, all of them on the path to fluency. So what's happening is they're following Joshua Fishman's graded intergenerational disruption scale when your language is critically endangered, the first thing you do is create a parent-aged generation of fluent speakers. So in Canada, the Seal Language House was formed to follow in the footsteps of the Salish School of, School of Spokane. We created a four-year adult fluency program. You can see in the photo, Sukh Tombs is teaching an evening class, and some of us are in the four-year four fluency program. Our full-time staff are paid to learn language. This is part of our success. Classroom safety is built into the curriculum and kindness is built into our curriculum. The adult lessons are going great over Zoom during COVID. We follow a world-class curriculum created by the Salish School of Spokane. We have excellent speaking, listening, reading, writing assessments results. We have results-based fluency. Our methods are mobile. Learners can take the skills to other domains, as we found with the Tikuti Chaylich Nest and working towards future domains. 1,600 curriculum hours are what is needed to create mid-intermediate fluency. Once we have mid-intermediate fluency in the 1,600 hours, together we can create real fluency. So our next step, now that we've created a small group of intermediate speakers, we're creating immersion domains. That's the next step. Our first immersion domain is the nest, which I'll speak about next, and our recording team will be a, an immersion domain. All of our staff is grounded in lateral kindness training, dealing with the effects of ongoing intergenerational trauma and training ourselves in nonviolent communication. These effects are real. Our first immersion domain, the Tikuti Chaylich Nest Partnership. You can see some of our graduates and 
their toddlers working together to create a full-time immersion domain. We can see Stack Polx on skis with her four-year-old son, Gassenut, Stikamaskit sledding with her daughter, Spapauk Itza, and Suchtums' son, Imlauch. And we can see a group with myself and Suchtums and Stikamaskit and three toddlers. These are Stack Polx's toddlers, Chetema and uh, visiting us that day. The nest's been running for a year. Our success factors have been having a schedule, a strong schedule from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. It's a flexible schedule, but having that schedule really gives us our basis to, to enable us to succeed in, in immersion, even though we're learners ourselves. We have supported ourselves to be more or less one-to-one -one with kids and adults and choosing activities that we are able to lead in immersion that's critical because we're learners so we need to think what can we lead successfully really successful activities are circle time songs activities such as games and free play and the free play is all followed with what's called passive narration the, the caregivers are there passively narrating what's going on in, in Insilchen. We have outdoor play is the best opportunity for immersion with adults and children. Cross-country skiing, tobogganing, which is my personal favorite, games, hikes, free play, and snack time. Snack time is an amazing immersion activity. Indoor activities such as table time, nap time, free play, games, manipulables, story time, and snack time. The other success factor not to be discounted is adult fluency lessons two hours a day for every staff member while the children are cared for. We're gaining adult fluency and children's fluency at the same time. Our program's based in outdoor learning. You can see us going on a hike, and the hikes involve snack time, rest time, free play, and often a treasure hunt. We're cross-country skiing with the toddlers. The toddlers all fell asleep in the toboggan while we chatted about the natural environment in Insilchen. We're playing hide-and-seek. We're berry-picking. The sea berries were ripe that day in Kasimut in Chas. Denise is yet, and we're teaching the children about the tactile effects of snow. Our daily nest schedule, which we're happy to share with anyone, is um, roughly from 8.30 to 9.30. We meet up and we have outdoor play and then a snack and then circle time with songs and games. Now during COVID, the moms and the tots are meeting three times a day for circle time. 10.30 to 11, we have free play with passive narration outdoors. 11 to 11.30, we have games such as Duck, Duck, Goose. Um, what time is it, Mr. Wolf? Treasure hunts, hiking, free play. And then we have lunch outdoors, which we have in a sort of a family-based picnic environment with lots of chatting. And then we all head indoors. The children have nap time. And this is when we schedule our adult lessons for two hours a day with childcare. So we take turns watching the kids and fitting in our two hours a day. And at the end of the day, around 2.30 p.m., we do our what were the best parts of the day and what things would we change session, our ongoing planning and the, the practice of praxis, which is ongoing evaluation and, and improvements of the program. Here's the kids learning through play. We have outdoor play and indoor play. Everything's designed so the children are having a wonderful time. They don't necessarily even realize they're learning in Silchen. What they're learning is how to interact with the environment, how to be kind to one another, how to take care of each other, and just basically having fun and being interacted with by caring, loving caregivers in, in Silchen. Elder recordings are 
a huge priority for us right now. As our language is critically endangered, we just have a handful of elders left that can partner and tell stories. We partner with seven elder speakers, and this fills a critical gap in advance in Silkshin cultural literature. You can find our recordings at thelanguagehouse.ca. It provides a great opportunity for our learners as they become intermediate speakers to spend time with elders and do recordings with elders. We share approximately five hours of audio each year. And now in the time of COVID, we're doing this via distance. So we're delivering the microphones to the elders and then phoning and Zooming the elders so that they can still do high quality recordings with the microphone right in their home. And you can see in the photo that we've got Audacity software running and the elders laugh and kuches demina. This is Victor Antoine, a wonderful storyteller. And we made a film so that you could have a window into what it's like in an immersion classroom. Kelly can limp limp to me and is each ums is our team slach lach an nach kukutsuia nach sam pizza kwa 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 mikin mikin wishin ashli in kamink it in kulao is yush a snuck seal, a squasquasia, tally in humming in Kelchen, Lintman, Kuyayat Allah, Moose Pink, Yayati Slachla, we we steep, Tallykin, Tallykin Limped. Cash this. This Moose Pink is me pin wishing. Wahweet is steam, Wahweet is saums, Wahweet is umlauch, Wahweet is scaloch in clapped it. Junmantum himich steam is me penuntum. Item Kulak in Kopils Kuen Kopils Summentum. It may stand a quickly as Oms at Palula, a squant, Nathlie to Mir or Clutch Kutlach Hoek or Sin Mayatin Huiti. It is Kelk Chout is. East Mipin Wilson. 
is umlauf salai is kustulah pekskan asli ya kai iki pekili ikut Why is not say is quiz buckle tank? The smooth pink to me is the Why, Victor? And I told you I would share with you some of the challenge, the challenges we faced through our years of language revitalization. Digging deep into ourselves to decolonize has been an incredibly enriching and rewarding and also challenging process. We've encountered barriers from the outside as well as barriers from the inside, from within our communities. We've experienced language tension, which is necessary. When learning a language, it's necessary to experience just the right amount of tension, but not too much. And that's a gift of our curriculum and from Sam Tietze, who's transmitting kindness and a, a sort of a joy of learning so that we overcome the language tension by creating a safe space for learning amongst ourselves. We have experience the tension of growth as we grow from a smaller organization to a larger organization it's really necessary to continually be facing the barriers of the ongoing effects of intergenerational trauma inside of ourselves and in order to create a domain we need to be really kind with ourselves and with our families and communities and picking ourselves up after setbacks and supporting each other I have a real debt of gratitude to our elders, Sam Tietze, Sarah Peterson, for creating the curriculum and the thousands of hours of audio recordings, the Salish School of Spokane for leading the way and lighting a path for language learners across our nation, our Seelch bands, the seven Seelch bands in the Okanagan Nation Alliance and the Okanagan Nation Alliance itself, Thank you so much for your ongoing support and to our funders, our supporters, our families, our community, our neighbors, and last but not least, the moms for caring enough about Insouchen 
to transmit it to our children in a safe and loving way. Ihi, Limlant. Thank you so much. Please contact me with any questions or concerns. I am so happy to reach out and help any, each and every one of you. Wyatt Limlumpt.